I don't uh I, I don't know if I should have purchased this today because you know four dollar coffee it's like it's it, it, it's okay right it's just a four dollar cup of coffee and then you look at your portfolio and uh, you bought the dip you bought thirty five hundred dollars of the dip yesterday at twelve dollars of a particular stock that somehow is just gonna magically change the world one day but you got it at twelve dollars you're like this is a phenomenal deal this is ridiculous and then lo and behold you wake up this morning you open up your Robin Hood and you look at what's happening with that stock. And you look that it got to a low of $10.57 after you loaded the dip at $12.44. And then you start to realize, well, wait a second. Why is this stock dropping? Is the macro economy bad? Is the narrative bad? Did they not grow 41% year over 41% year over year? Did they not increase their commercial revenue by 103%? Like, what exactly is going on? And then you also realize when you wake up in the morning <laughs> that that the queen of Wall Street, the one who goes against the grain, that is a trailblazer, that does her own thing, that innovates, sold 5 million shares of that company as well. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Kathy Wood has sold 5 million shares of Palantir stock and Palantir is dropping today and it's bad. It's not bad if you're long, but it looks bad if you're seeing what's happening in the short term. So let's analyze a couple of things that are happening. <clears throat> First of all, price action, then we'll get to Mrs. Wood. Um, look, price action, again, I, I, we had a phenomenal earnings. I just did my earnings video yesterday. I just did a recap of it. Uh, in that video, I said that the price action and the stock price <clears throat> starting to become irrelevant to me. I, I don't see how when you go 41% year over year, the market doesn't get it or the market doesn't understand it. Yes, you have little misses here and there and it's like the market tanks you. The, the, the key thing to understand, and we saw this with Roku today, uh, if anyone was seeing what was going on with that market crash or, or with that stock crash and DraftKings as well today, if you are not meeting earnings and beating earnings in a particular manner, the market's not going to reward you. And even if you do beat earnings in a way that they don't perceive is the right way of beating earnings, market's not going to reward you as well. So for something like Palantir, if the expectation baked into Wall Street, and I'm learning so much more about expectations, I want to do more thoughts and like research on what is an expectation. Because when Palantir missed earnings per share, and it was like 0 0.02 versus 0 0.04, that triggered an algorith algorithmic sell-off immediately. So it's like, of course, the stock price was going to drop 10 to 10, 12 percent in the morning because the algorithms didn't interpret Palantir as having a good earnings, particularly because of these expectations that they were not able to meet. It's just numbers that did, that did not meet. Now, did some actual investors not like earnings? Sure. But at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff is driven through what's going on in the market. And what's going on in the market is they're not rewarding growth stocks, no matter how well they're doing, even in these bad times, no matter how much money they have on their balance sheet, no matter how much debt they don't have because of different narratives and because of the fear that's going on with these particular types of stocks. Palantir will not be a $10 stock forever. Like, it's just that simple to me. It's not going to be a $12 stock forever. It's not going to be $11 stock forever. It may take some time to get out of it, but it's not going to be like that forever. And that's what investing is to me. Investing to me is not, oh, in the next 100 days, it'll go from 12 to 24, but because are you going to sell at 24? It's like, no, if you are an actual investor and you're waiting for this for the long term, it doesn't matter if it's four years or five years. It, 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 it matters about when the narrative changes. And this is what I said in that video. The narrative has not changed, which is why I sleep like a baby at night. It sucks looking at my portfolio, but I sleep like a baby because the narrative has not changed. I wasn't sleeping like a baby the past couple of nights with my Facebook stock, and I'm doing another video on that coming up soon. But with Palantir, I sleep like a baby. So it's like, so it's like okay, if the narrative is not changing and I don't need it to go to 12 to 24 tomorrow, and I definitely don't expect that with what's going on in the macro level economy right now, then if it goes from 12 to 10, it's like, it sucks, but it's like, all right, it's going to happen. So I, 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 think, I think the stock price for everyone who's, who's super struggling about it, if you are long, you should not be worrying about it. And if you are long and you are worried about this, I don't think you dive deep enough into earnings. And, and if you haven't dived deep enough into earnings, watch more videos about what happened in Palantir. Don't just li listen to mine. Go listen to Sha Sasha. Go listen to Tom. Go listen to whoever you need to listen to to try to wrap your head around the bear and bull cases around earnings. My overall thesis was that I thought it was phenomenal, where there's some parts that were a little eh. Yes, but even those parts were not bear arguments to me. They were just like, oh, they allocated different parts there and here. They didn't grow in the government too much because they were growing something else. So it wasn't that big of a deal to me. Um, but you develop your own thesis. And if you can sit with that thesis and you can see that the narrative of what's happening has not changed. And in fact, they beat the expectations of what was supposed to happen. They beat revenues by about 18 million bucks. Then it's like, all right, like, but you have to make that decision if you're going to sleep well at night. Um, the only reason you're not sleeping well at night with this investment is if you need the money that you have lost. And that goes back to an investing 101 thing, which is you can't invest money that you have to lose. Like, 
if you can see the red and realize I don't need that money today, tomorrow, next month, next year, then you have time. <laughs> like it, it, it's so ridiculous when when people are like, oh, I'm down ten thousand dollars, and it's it's like okay. But do you need those 10000 Do you need to pay rent with that 10000 No. Okay, so then, like, it, yes, it sucks. It mentally is not the best to know that you're down $10,000 from your net worth. But if you know what you've invested in and you know that $10,000 is going to come back and it's going to come back at a higher level, then you kind of got to wait it out. And it's like, that's just the nature of investing. That's not something to be so, like, uptight about. No, inv First of all, no person who has ever gotten successful did it without taking a lot of uncertainty and risk. That's the nature of being an entrepreneur. That's the nature of building anything. So if you're not building a crazy startup or like amazing business or anything like that, if you're literally just investing and you can't handle risk in that investment, you can't handle uncertainty in your stomach, then it's whatever. Again, let me caveat this by saying, if you don't have conviction, that uncertainty gets like 7,000 times harder. So like if I was invested in AMC right now because I just, AMC, Dogecoin, I just wanted to invest in them you bet my stomach would be turning at night because I have no idea what I'm investing in. But the people who are super AMC bulls who get the narrative, who get something that other people don't get and they have conviction in it, you know, all, all the best to them. And I'm sure people say all the best to the Palantir bulls, right? Because they just don't get it. That's fine. I don't think Palantir is AMC or Dogecoin. I think it is fundamentally different. I think that earnings call and Alex Karp really explaining what it is is also fundamentally different and, and substantiated a differentiated approach to actually being able to do something in the world via software and technology that I think no other company can compete with, quite frankly, which is why I sleep well at night. So that's the analysis on the stock price. Now, let's talk about Mrs. Wood. <sighs> Look, here's my overall thesis. I don't care anymore. I don't care. Now, let me say, let me say this. Uh, let, let, me, let me say a couple things about this. I made a lot of videos in the past when Kathy Wood sold and I would justify what she was doing. And a lot of the tone of those videos were like, hey, she's rebalancing. She needs money to put here and put there. It's not a big deal, blah, 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 blah. And all those arguments were true. She, uh, Kathy Wood sold 5 million shares yesterday. She still owns about 25 million shares of the company or like 27, something like that. Um, now I'm done trying to defend her and I'm rather trying to uh, sort of communicate that I don't know what she's doing. So there's no way I can defend her. Before I get into this, let me say, Kathy Wood is smarter than me. She's smarter than me. She's smarter than a lot of people on Wall Street. I'm not going to be as arrogant as some YouTubers who agreed with Kathy Wood for a long time and now they don't agree with her anymore. Uh, not even throwing shade, but it's just like that's kind of weird, right? Because like the whole narrative changes. I, I agree with disruptive innovation. I agree with her arguments around inflation. I'm not like if you're in a, a growth stock investor, you can't, I think not that you kind of have to agree with everything she says, but you have to agree with the overall thesis that she's going for. Otherwise, you would not be invested in growth stocks right now because it, it, like it doesn't make sense logically. Why would you invest your money in these growth stocks if you don't? don't believe that inflation is going to go away, that supply chains are going to get better, that interest rates are not really going to affect everything, and that there's going to be explosive growth, which is going to lead to deflationary effects. Like, that is her thesis. Inflation goes away, supply chains get better, innovation leads to deflation, exponential returns based on S-curves colliding. I've done a lot of videos on this. That's why growth stocks win. If you don't believe in that thesis, you probably shouldn't be investing in Palantir. But I do believe in that thesis. And I believe in that thesis a lot heavily influenced by Kathy Wood. So I'm not saying she's an idiot. I'm not saying she's wrong. Nothing like that. I'm just saying I don't know what she's doing anymore. Like, I don't get it. You sell Palantir to buy Roku? Really? You sell Palantir to buy Roblox? This metaverse thing that we don't even know is going to be a thing? Like, and again, those stocks are great. I mean, those companies are great. Those stocks are taking a beating and like Robinhood, right? Like I use Robinhood, but like, I don't know if it's better than Pound. It, the weird thing is when she says AI is going to be $85 trillion market. It's like, so you're selling at $12 when you bought it at 16 in January. Probably the best play in AI, machine learning, and data analytics. That's going to be the that's going to be the undergirding foundation for every industry that you think matters and care about. You know, like Palantir is going to be one of those main players that is going to be the foundational infrastructure that that allows those companies and and those industry leaders to actually use AI in a meaningful way. So it's, it's like I, I just don't get it anymore, right? And and like the one argument I can say is. Not that she's rebalancing, but that because she's an active portfolio manager, she has to sell like actively and some positions just have to get liquidated. That's just the nature of being an active portfolio manager. And other, the other argument is when people sell out of her fund, she loses money. So she has to sell certain stocks to maintain the balances. And a lot of people have been selling out of ARC, right? Things like that. Those, those are logical justifications for why this is happening. Now, we will see in the future if she keeps selling. 
I very heavily doubt she's going to liquidate her entire pound share position. I think that's stupid. I do think when you have these many shares, right, 33 million, and you get rid of 5 million, it's it seems like a lot, but it's also not a lot because it's like you still have a huge chunk of shares, and you're likely doing this because you have to allocate money to other things and because you're an active ETF, right, stuff like that. All of those are excuses at the end of the day, and those excuses make a lot of sense. And I don't think those excuses should be swept under the rug. It's important to understand uh, Kathy also sold Tesla pre-split before you know Tesla's crazy run-up. So I think this was like May 2019. I might be wrong on the receipts, but uh, I was talking on Twitter to someone yesterday. He told they told me that. So like she's been known to sell her A plus plus winners before they take off because it's an ETF. But that's not the point that I'm trying to make. That's not the point of this video. The point of this video is I don't care anymore. That's the point. So I made the argument for why Kathy Wood likely doing this doesn't have an impact, likely rebalancing, likely moving stuff around, likely has to deal with regulations when people sell other funds, she has to deal with the money, likely has to deal with the fact that there's just other positions that has a heavier dip that she's liquidating into. But that's not the point. All of those l arguments are, are, are reasonable and fair if you were looking for like a justification for why she's doing this. My point is I don't care anymore because I believe in the Palantir moat so heavily at this point that I just don't care if Kathy doesn't. I Like I'm not gonna deal with Kathy's um, uh, uh, thoughts on Palantir and her thesis and compare it to my thesis anymore. Like my thesis is my thesis. And I think this is the part of becoming an independent investor. This is not saying I'm smarter than Kathy. This is just saying I have my own thesis. And if she wants to sell to buy Roblox or Roku, go ahead. You know, if I was her, I would be selling Roblox on Roku to buy Palantir. But that's, that's me. She's her. So I just don't care anymore. And I think if you're a Palantir investor, like... I don't know. Like, I'm not saying you shouldn't care anymore. For me, I sleep better at night. Again, we're talking about sleeping better at night. Like, how do you deal with your investments by just not caring about what she does anymore? Now, if she liquidates her entire position, that is that'll suck. But even if she, like, if she sells 25 million shares tomorrow, I just won't care. Like, I, I just, I, I, on, I just did a video the other day about institutions loading up the pound tier dip. Like, the Bank of Canada or Montreal, not the Bank of Canada, the Bank of Montreal increased the position by 600%. And you got all these other funds increasing by like an average of 30%, 70%, 40%. So it's like, and they were all buying during the, the crazy dip, uh, which was in December. Now, did they sell by then? We don't know. We'll find out soon. But it's like when you're buying that heavy of a dip and you're increasing your positions, which is what Kathy also did during this time as well in January before now, it, it, it doesn't worry me that much. Institutional ownership is up at about 35%. We need to get it to around 50 before things stabilize. And I think that'll happen over the next year and a half. But I don't know, and I, I'm not concerned anymore. If she sold 25 million shares tomorrow and all these other institutions still hold it and, and I still believe in the moat, then I just personally don't care. And I think that's the nature about of being an investor. And one may say, well, if she sells 25 million shares, she has more data, she has more research, she knows way more than you. It's like, yeah, that might be true. But at the end of the day, I believe in what I believe based upon the research and due diligence I've done. And I'm never going to work at ARK, and I don't think it makes sense to literally just follow one person blindly. Like, oh, ARK sold. They know way more than you. It's like, there's a lot of problems with that. A lot of things they got wrong, and a lot of things, yeah, some things they get right. And sure, they have a lot of uh, research and all this stuff, but people can be wrong. At the end of the day, people are just human beings. She's in her head doing all these reports to connect the supply chains and inflations. What if she's wrong about that? What if her inventory reports around supply chain bottlenecks are not necessarily the most accurate? I mean, like, there's a lot of things out there, and I don't want to make excuses. I just want to make the point that if you are an investor in a stock, forget Palantir, any stock, you have to have conviction in that stock. And if you have conviction in that stock, and you're riding with the ship, then it's great to have people come along. I think Palantir, Palantir is creating a phenomenal community, especially on Twitter and YouTube. I mean, like, there's just so many people that are good participants of the community. We have someone like Sachin, who's a private investor in SpaceX, been consulting for 25 years, adding his experiential knowledge. He's talked to people that have worked with Palantir. Like, you have really good ears and, and, and speakers in the community um, communicating about this product that you have to kind of shut out the noise around just like, oh, this active portfolio manager who's super famous sold a bunch of your stock. Your stock sucks. It's like, well, no, I don't think so. I, I just I just believe in this stock a lot more than anyone else, and I, I'm done caring about Kathy Wood. So, I mean, I respect her, respect all of her thoughts, respect all of her research. She still has 25 million shares of Palantir, so she still has a lot of Palantir. I do believe this was just a rebalancing thing, particularly because on a day when earnings happens and it dips, they have, there has to be a little bit of a, you know, she has to do stuff to allocate different portions of capital. She obviously believes that Roku and Roblox matter more. It's like, okay, if that's the reason you're selling Palantir now, then that's fine. Maybe she's going to start buying Palantir later because she's like, we need to see a little bit more growth right now. But Roblox and Roku, the dip is just too good. We have to go all in. Either she's going to be right or she's going to be wrong. But I believe I'm going to be right about Palantir 10 years from now. And because of that, I just don't care anymore. So... 
we'll see what eventually happens. Again, if you're worried about this too much, still has a very big position, uh, likely sold for some for to buy the dip on some other stocks. The question is why Palantir to buy the dip on other stocks, and I think that's because they have a lot of Palantir, so you got to liquidate something at some point. And if you already bought the dip on like the heaviest stocks like Robinhood, you're probably not going to sell that because you already loaded the dip so heavily. Whereas for Palantir, they didn't load the dip as heavily as they did for other stocks, particularly because they started buying it in January versus now with the market crashing even more which means there's juicier prices for their even higher convictions. Palantir is not their like top 10 conviction right now. So those are my thoughts. Uh, let's see what happens. Tough times in the market. Got to stay strong with it. Uh, and yeah, let me know your comments and the thoughts. Let me know your thoughts and comments in the comments around Kathy Wood selling and your overall take on the price action for Palantir. Looking forward to it. My name is Mitt. I'll see you guys in the next one.